Hey, Bob. Good morning. How you doing? I've, I've, I've started an oil, let me say, I've, I've been working on an oil painting for a while. Good morning. And, and the likeness is good, except the fact that, that she looks cartoony for some reason or another. I don't know. I'm going to have to work on this for a while. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is that the one that you sent to me? The drawing? No, that's, that's, that's one I started yesterday. This is just a, a graph, I mean, a, a, a charcoal thing I started yesterday and work in progress. So you're okay. looking for... Our, our work so there you go <laughs> okay yes yeah hey naomi how you doing hi great happy friday dear thank you okay we have the tequila ready you got the tequila <laughs> ready all right yay all right virtual i like it when you talk dirty <laughs> yeah vir virtual margaritas yay <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I know. That's it's in a way it's kind of sad. Just virtual margaritas, but no way. Really? Yeah. Mm. So today, let's see, we've got a few more minutes. Yeah, but yeah, another minute or so. Let everybody get here. Um again, just based on you know what people have been sending in and asking questions about and things. We're gonna talk a little bit about the human head today and how to draw it, okay? Oh, good. Oh, That's good. Faces. Yeah, yeah, because everybody, you know, uh, kind of finds drawing the human head kind of a challenge. And, you know, Bob, you were saying that you had started an oil painting and that it was feeling a little bit kind of like a cartoon, right? Yes. So, you know, there could be several different reasons for that, right? One might be that you don't have the underlying structure in place uh, and or, you know, you have something, you know, in the proportions off on the head, right? So I, I have uh, actually two videos to show you, okay? And both of these deal with what is commonly referred to as the Loomis, L-O-O-M-I-S method, okay? Loomis method. Um, L what? L-O-O-M-I-S. All right. Okay. He, he's been around for a long, long time. Yes, yes. Loomis. Uh, yes, but the thing, you know, now, you know, Loomis is credited with this method, but actually if you go back a little further, there's a guy by the name of Nicolaides uh, who actually first came up with this. And uh, there's a book out, it's called Nicolaides Constructive Anatomy, okay? And uh, it was published, well, I think it was like published in the 30s or the 40s, um, but you know, Nicolaides was, you know, before that, he was around about, you know, 18, like 70, 1880. Um, anyway, his, his teaching method has been pretty much so adopted by most uh, traditional art schools, you know, for oh, teaching what we are, are, would commonly refer to as constructive anatomy, all right? Now, we're not gonna get into constructive anatomy you know, as a broad subject today. Uh, I found it. <laughs> yeah. But what we are going to talk about is we're going to talk about how, you know, a simple way of drawing a head, right? Now, when I see most of your drawings, right, um, a lot of your drawings come to me and you're drawing a human head and it's doing this, you know, just like my head. It's looking right at you, right? But the thing you have to keep in mind is human heads very seldom do that, okay? What happens if I look this way? Or if I look up? Or if I look down? You see, those shapes change, right? And you have to kind of account for that, right? And so the Loomis method or, you know, uh, Nicolaides would explain to you that you have these basic geometric forms, right? 
that you can work with to begin to understand really what's going on with that human head in particular, all right? So uh, I'm gonna jump into this video. Um, I think this young man explains it, you know, very clearly. And, uh, you know, I'll probably let it play through. And if we want to talk about certain aspects of it, we may go back and replay it. And I can stop it and kind of explain things maybe a little more clearly to you. Does that sound fair? Yes. Okay. All right. So uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna do a share here, and uh, and we're gonna get started. <clears throat> yeah. Let's see. Well, no, there's Proco. Where is this guy? Oh, it's doing something weird. All right, where did you go? Murphy's Law. Pardon? It's Murphy's Law. Murphy's Law? Murphy's yeah, if Law. It, if it can go wrong, it will. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's, let's, let's try not to do that. I mean, it's right there. It's uh, quick. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but this has got the Proco thing on it. Okay, well, since that's up, I'll go ahead and play it, and uh, and then and then in the meantime, I'll go find the other one. Okay, everybody, see the Proco thing right there? Um, yep. Okay, good. Away we go. And unfortunately, this is YouTube, so. You're going to get an hey ad. Guys, welcome to Proco. My name is Dan Benko. It's been six years since I made my first Loomis Head drawing video. And since then, I've gotten a lot of questions regarding the Loomis Method. Uh, so I think it's a good time to take a second look at it, do a bunch of quick sketches, and give you guys some tips on using the Loomis Method. And that should help you get some better head drawing. This is going to be a three-part video series. In the first video, I'll review the basics. Then in the second video, I will show you how to adapt the Loomis head onto heads of all shapes and proportions. Then in the third video, I'll show you a more intuitive approach using the Loomis method a little more loose. The Loomis method, basically what we do is we have a uh, cranial mass a sphere and then we attach a jaw to it with like a triangular boxy shape. There it is. That sphere cranium, we're going to chop off the side because the side of our head is kind of flat, right? So we got to make sure we, we kind of chop that off. That's a flat plane. And then in a neutral pose from the middle, that's where the eyebrows are going to be. And I'm kind of wrapping this kind of like has a rubber band around the head. You'll see when we look up or down, it's not. Yeah, I'm gonna stop him right there. All right, so you see what he did is he drew a circle, right? Yeah. Now, if you think about a circle <clears throat> as a three-dimensional form, it's a sphere, right? So it's a round ball. And so what he did is he divided that ball in half with a, a line. But because the reference that he's looking at and the head is turned and slightly looking up, he didn't make that a straight line. He drew a curve. And if you continue that curve, you see it would make an oval, right? Go around on the back side of that sphere and it would connect up again, right? So he's just, it's almost like he cut that ball in half with that line, all right? But it's, Keep in mind, depending on what's happening with the head, it's not gonna be a flat, straight line. It's gotta have a curve to it because it's gotta go around that ball. Okay. A straight line like that, it'll wrap around, kind of like an equator, a rubber band. And then from the bottom of this oval, which isn't the bottom of the circle, but the bottom of this oval here, we bring another parallel line across that gives us the nose, we drop that down, and that gives us the chin. If this is too fast for you guys, 
go watch the initial series because that's where I. Okay. So, again, what he did, you know, that part, you know, where he started off with that uh, circle that sat on the side of that sphere, and the part he didn't tell you is that should take up about two thirds, you know, of the height of that sphere. Okay, that's what you're kind of cutting off on the side plane. But, you know, he did an ellipse at the halfway point, and then he did a ellipse at the bottom, you know, of that part that he cut off, and he got a proportion, right? And that proportion just happens to be about one third of the height of the face. And then he took that measurement, the distance between those two, and he added it to the bottom, and that gives you that bottom third to the chin. It explains it better in the other video. We'll play that after this. We teach the method. This is just going to be a quick overview. From here, we attach the jaw from the brow, side plane, down to the chin, and then from about uh, a vertical halfway on the side plane, that's kind of where that jaw starts. It'll be different on different people, and I'll show you guys how to change the but Right now, I'm just drawing an average person. You can get jaw taller than. Which on him, it actually is that the bottom of the nose down to the chin is actually longer from the nose to the brows. But right now, I'm drawing an average from his head. Later on, I will modify the loom's heads to fit the exact subject. There you go, there's your average loom's head. And then from here, we gotta divide the jaw in front and side plane. So the side of the chin starts right there, and then I kinda just bring it down, bring it down on the forehead, and there you go. So you got front plane, side plane. And you'll typically see core shadows or highlights yeah. along these planes, except in here where the eye socket is, and that's gonna be a deep socket Right, so it's not you're not going to have a corner or plane there, which I will talk about a little more later. Basically, there's my quick sketch. Quick sketch. I'm going to complete Luna's head quick sketch. I wouldn't really go any further than that. If I'm just doing quick sketch. Maybe I'll do a center line. If I'm just doing a, a Luna's head quick sketch. Now, usually I don't do Luna's head quick sketch. Usually I'll just do like I'll go a little bit further than that and make sure and uh, some more construction lines in there. But in this lesson. I'm focusing just on Luma's heads and then maybe the occasional uh, simple neck attachment to that. Okay, so there you go. There's a nice Luma's head. This is a nice guide to then help me put features on top of that. Let's go on to the next pose. And this next pose, we've got Yoni, and he is looking down, and so we're so looking down at the top of his head. So I'm gonna start with that cranial ball again. It always, the first step is always just now the side plane, where do I chop it off? That'll depend on the side to side turn, the up and down, not so much, but the tilt left and right. So side to side, this is a much more uh, front angle. So I'm gonna see less of the side, more of the front. This is about half and half. Um, and also he's kind of tilting his head. It's not straight up and down. So a few things will happen. One, the this cylinder for the, uh, this oval will be narrower, and also yeah. I'm tilting it to kind of go with the angle of the head. The height of that oval relative to the ball is going to stay pretty much the same. And when we have such a front straight on angle, what happens is on this far side, we're actually going to have to chop off a little bit of that as well. Because, you know, we're, we're chopping this off and we're seeing an oval. On the other side, we won't see an oval. Back in there, but we do have to chop this piece off, and so I like to do that just to kind of help me visualize the rest of it. Okay, so there would be the top of the head. This is kind of like the forehead, and then from the middle, I'm going to bring a line downward. Remember, this is wrapping around the head. Since it's tilting down, it's not going to be a straight line across. Now we have to wrap around the ball. So this is now the brow ridge line. Mm -hmm. Got 
tilting that. This is going to be parallel with the tilt of the head. Because we're both going up and down. And then from there, we're going to wrap the same parallel line across. And drop another one down to the chin. And in here, you start getting foreshortening. Depends on really how close you are to the model. But in general, the thirds will get smaller and smaller as they go away from you, but just a little bit. Don't, don't push it too much. You know, otherwise, unless the camera is right there, right next to the person, then you'll see some really extreme foreshortening. Just keep that in mind so that you don't do the opposite effect. Unless that is the type, uh, the person's type, where they are, their jaw is bigger than their forehead. Then you can push it that way against foreshortening, and I'm not drawing the average people. And it's deliberate at that point. You're doing that. And then we can find the hairline by, again, kind of dropping or curving the same parallel line around. And this is a top plane. All of this is a top plane. Front plane, side plane. And that's it. There's my quick sketch Loomis head. Okay, so now we got a side view of Veronica. Again, we start with Neil Mall. And then from a side view, this oval, this side plane that we chop off, it's just going to be right in the middle of that circle. So you have a circle and a circle. You could put it in, or you could just, um, I'll put it in just so I have my size reference. Uh, as a reminder for you guys, it's going to be about two thirds of the height. Uh, this the side plane is about two thirds of the height. Uh, circle. We got one sixth on the top and bottom, and that's two thirds. But again, like the, these measurements are for the perfect average person. Usually, it's not going to be like that. Usually, you're going to have to change the portion. So usually, I do a more intuitive method. Um, really later. But right now, let's get this perfect side view. So drop from the forehead down to the chin, that angle. So this, from the, from the middle of the circle, going in here, that's the brow ridge. And from here, parallel line, that's the nose. And then drop equal distance, there's the chin. Perpendicular line in the middle, that's where the jaw starts. Jaw, and actually that might be a little taller. Like that. The bottom of the jaw, neck, And the hairline, again, from here, hairline. So you got these equal thirds on an average person. Hairline, brow, nose, chin. Okay, um, one more thing I want to point out from a side view is that the, top, uh, the height and the depth, the width from front to back, um, is going to be the same. So it fits into a square. But it's not from this front plane. It's from the tip of the nose. And again, an average length nose. So, you know, we can say the nose is here. This length is equal to that length. And that depth. Okay. And then to the back, it doesn't go to the hair because the hair changes so much, right? Um, could be a bald person, could be someone with very large hair in the back. So it's from the tip of the nose to the back of the skull. And this is actually where the hair is. So when you're measuring people from photos, keep in mind that there's a bunch of mass, a bunch of distance from the head to the hair.
So really quickly, I'm going to just add a, a little bit of the, a little indication of this nose, uh, brow ridge. I like to bring out the muzzle of the lips and the teeth, and then that in back in for the chin. I wish I could put that again. From a side view, the eye socket is just going to be this like rectangular shape, like that. Right in there, the, the top of the cheekbone is like the bottom of the eye socket. Like this rhythm, and it goes to the top of the ear. So. Now, how do you apply this method on people that don't fit the average proportions? I'll show you tomorrow. Hope you guys are enjoying the 12 Days of Proco Quick Sketch Edition. If you missed some episodes, I'll have links to all 12 down in the description. So. Go check them out, watch every single one of them, subscribe. Bye. Growing up, it was always, did you put lotion on your elbows? Did you put lotion on your knees? Did you put a plate on your lips? We got I love it. Okay. Add time. It does give you that glowy feel and also moisturizes as well. No, oh, come on. Let's get over this. Okay. Uh, let's, let me click on the next video I wanted to show you. Part two. Yeah. It's that one right there. Okay. This, this hey, is the one we were trying to find. Welcome to front planes of the head made super simple. Now I had done uh, another front planes of the head video that you can check out here that was really quite complex and very advanced, but this one is really for the super beginner person who might have trouble just conceiving the idea of the planes and the proportions. So this, if that's you, this is really gonna help you. So I'm excited to share it with you. I've got this handy app on my phone and it shows off what we're going for. We're going for very simple, plain descriptions of the head from the front and the side. With this app, you can see it from any angle virtually. So I'm going to do the front planes and the side planes in this demo. So let's jump in and get started. All right, the very first thing we'll do is draw a circle. And then we're going to bisect that circle vertically and horizontally. And then cut it in half. And then we're going to divide the top half into thirds, the bottom half into thirds. And then we'll add one more third at the bottom. <clears throat> top third is the hairline. This middle third is the brow. It's also where the ear is going to be, the top of the ear. This one is the nose. And the bottom of the ear. And here we have the chin. Let's get a sense of the neck. So from the top of the head to the bottom of the nose, that length will be the pit of the neck or the sternal notch. And I'll just put a letter V this way, just tangential to the side of that circle. And that's the angle that the ear is going to be. <clears throat> and we can take this whole length from the top of the head to the chin and find the middle for the place. And that's gonna be the eye line.
Now I'm going to draw basically a diagonal line from the hairline down to that nose line, right where both of them intersect with the circle. That's going to give me the width of the head. <clears throat> then from there, I can drop down to the chin with a couple of diagonal lines. I'm going to take the brow line, not touching the edges of the width of the head, but just inside. I'll just curve it just a little bit. So that's a curved line. And I'm going to take that just inside the width of the head and just draw one of the planes. And the same thing on the left side. Remember, we're going from general to specific, from the big shapes to the small shapes. I'm just going to connect these here. Now I'll place the eyeball, the center of the eye, where I think that's going to be. And then I'll drop a vertical down. And that's going to give us some important landmarks for the width of the chin and the width of the mouth. Before we do that, let's uh, go ahead and put the ear in. So the ear starts at the eye line, comes up to the brow line and goes down to the nose. That's on the eye line, goes up to the brow line, step out on average. And then comes down to that nose line, so it fits in that middle third. And once we have the ears in, we can just draw a diagonal from the top of the ear right to where that vertical line from the eye intersects with the horizontal line of the nose. Let's do that on both sides. Okay, and then we'll go straight down to the chin. And that's really gonna help us out here. There now really establishes the width of that chin and where it fits in to overlaps the front of the jaw. And then we can follow the back half of the jaw. Okay, now the bottom of the nose, this third right here is probably the top of the chin. So let's divide from the bottom of the nose to the top of the chin into thirds. And that third there is going to give us the placement of the mouth. And those plumb lines from the eyes give us the width of the mouth. So it's not going to go too far this way or too shy of those lines. Of course, Everybody's different, but in general, that will be the width of the mouth and the placement of the mouth. And then let's build the eye socket out further. So we've got the keystone. And then dropping down, we've got the side planes of the nose that look, looks like a necktie shape. You can imagine a necktie that guys wear. The 
and I'm going to add the glabella, which is a down facing plane. And then we can establish the front plane. very clearly. So let's put that in shadow, the planes facing away from the light. If we're the light source, these planes will get some tone because they're facing away from the light and the tones facing us, but the planes facing us will get the light, most of the light. So there'll be light in value. And that's an underplane right there. And from the side of the head, I'll just bring a line down on both sides. And that'll give me about the width of the neck. And then somewhere around the chin, we'll get the shoulders just coming out. You can draw them like a sagging shoulder muscle or just a straight line is fine. Good the neck. Yeah, that's Egg shape there. Let's start with that same idea of the circle, just a simple circle. And I'm just going to draw the guidelines out that show the heights of the features. This is exactly how we did it in character design for games, because it makes it a lot easier and a lot faster to recreate the character from the front to the side if we just draw out the basic guidelines. I'll just go ahead and bisect it vertically and horizontally with brow ridge is. Divide those into thirds on so the top half, bottom half into thirds. Have one more from the chin. I'll just go ahead and make an, an arc here for the front of the face. And we're going to go ahead and put an inner circle inside that first circle, and that's the side point of the head. I'll bring the jaw in. And the back part of the jaw, the nuchal line, they call it, and it connects at about the eye line where the neck connects to the skull. Let's pull the neck down, it's a simple C curve. And that front part of the neck can kind of line up with this inner circle come off of that. The neck's wider on top than it is on the bottom. So let's put the ear in at about an 11 degree angle off the center. And it's in that middle third from the brow to the ear. Okay, I want to stop him for a second. Okay. Because when, when he set up how the neck connects, all right? And he made a statement that the neck 
is thicker at the top and it narrows. That's true if you're a woman, okay? It's not true if you're a man, all right? Um, one of the things about the neck is that actually with men, most of the time, the neck actually broadens to the bottom, right? And is narrower at the top, but with women, it's broader at the top and narrows as it goes down. So if you're trying to do a female figure or female head, you gotta keep that uh, in mind or versus a male, all right? The male, you're gonna make it wider at the bottom, all right? So just wanted to throw that in there. Okay. And there'll be roughly one ear to the back of the skull. I'm not even the eyes about here. I'm just going to go ahead and add that uh, muscle that connects the skull to the sternum. The long triangle. Let's go ahead and put in the nose. A little bit cut in here from the brow to the kind of keystone. Go ahead and come out. Keep it real simple, like a triangle. And then there's the two cylinder. Front of the forehead, going back. The lips about there. The eye is at an angle, and it's not right there at the nose or at the keystone. It's there's some space in between, and it's facing kind of downward, downward pointing is the socket. And I'll just put a triangle in here. And we'll put the eyebrow right where it makes that turn. That's going to be that temple bone, that side plane, dividing the front plane and the side plane of the head. And I'll go ahead and Catch a diagonal line off the top of the ear. Go right about the nose line and then come down to find the chin and where it fits into the jaw. And then I can extend, you can define this a little bit more here, the side of the eye socket and then just draw a line to the top of the ear, and then you've got that cheekbone all placed and spaced correctly. 
do that. The more <clears throat> info on the nose, now let's put in the hairline. All of this plane change from front of the head to the side of the head, so that hairline will go Wait. down to sideburn. And there you have it, front and side planes of the head made super easy for the beginner. Hmm. Hey guys, I really hope that this simple front and side plane breakdown of the face really helped you. If it did, please like and subscribe and add a comment down below. You can follow me on Instagram at DrawJuice and feel free to check out my head drawing okay. courses at DrawJuice.com. All right, we'll see you in the next one. Hello. Okay. Hello. All Good. right. So, uh, anybody got any comments about any of that? Anybody got any questions? Was that confusing in any what way? What if one hot selling Amazon product could replace your income and change what? your life? Hang on. Hi, I'm Sophie Howard and I'm a professional Amazon seller. Let's, so over the last turn, five years or so, I've been working. Let's turn Sophie off. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Poor Sophie. Nobody wants to listen to her. Uh, anyhow. Okay. So uh, as I was saying, anybody got any uh, questions about that? Easy as pie. Easy as pie, right? Right, yeah. <laughs> you just got to know what right. and when to connect them. Okay, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, if you were, let's say that you, you were very ambitious and you ended up uh, taking a course at the Academy of Art uh, in San Francisco, uh, basically what they would do is they would have you work with a live model in the drawing classes. And you would literally draw thousands of these heads. Uh, and in Barbara Bradley's class, she would give you about a minute and a half to draw, you know, that model's head and without the features, okay, but just these simple constructive lines. Uh, and she would have that model change poses and angles uh, about every minute and a half to two minutes. And so you would end up with pages of these things, right? And what, what that did, you know, when I was studying there, was it really reinforced the idea that you had to really look at something that was really very complex and simplify it, right? And, you know, that's what this is all about. You know, this, it's really all about, you have to look at these things and figure out a way to make them more simple for you to understand, right? Because if you don't understand that form, you know, or how to draw that form, then, you know, you you can put all the lipstick on it you want right but if that underlying structure isn't there it's not going to look right see so leonardo da vinci had uh is is known for a phrase and it is goes like this you can only draw what you know simple enough, right? You can only draw what you know. And so the whole thing for me and for most artists is what you're doing with a drawing is you're trying to find out, you know, what this thing really is. You know, you're exploring it, you're exploring the form. And, you know, particularly when you're drawing a, uh, a human head, what you're really finding out is you're finding out that particular individual's proportions, right? Because everybody's proportions are a little bit different. 
uh, what they were drawing there, uh, as I said earlier, was the, it's using what is commonly referred to these days as the Loomis method, right? Again, though, where Loomis got his ideas from was a guy by the name of Nicolaitis, right? Which goes further back. But, you know, just, you know, understanding the quote unquote ideal proportions and being able to draw those forms and structures at, you know, any different, you know, any given angle will go a long way in improving your drawings of people, okay? Now, it's not going to help you with dogs, okay, or horses or things like that because uh, they have different proportions in us. But if, if you can understand how to break that human head down into those simple, simple shapes, well, at that point, then you could change those shapes to look like a horse, you know, or a dog, or any other animal, right? Or for that matter of fact, you know, if you start thinking about simple shapes, you can draw anything. Because really, whatever you're trying to draw, whether it's a boat or a house or a human body, at some point, you know, you're going to have to begin to understand what those basic simple shapes and proportions are. And so, you know, I, today, you know, we're just really kind of talking about the human head, but it really applies to everything. You know, whether you're drawing a flower, you're drawing an apple, you're drawing a head, same basic things. You know, you've got to understand the shape and the form of it and where you're at, well, you know, when you're looking at it is going to determine, you know, how much of those forms or shapes you're seeing, right? So I thought both of these videos were really good at sort of simplifying the idea of drawing a head. And did anybody notice, okay, they didn't, they didn't start by drawing the eyelashes, did they? No. No. <laughs> how, how many of you have started by drawing the eyelashes? No. Quite a few of you. <laughs> no. Oh, no, I've never done that. Yeah. <laughs> The eyes are the last thing because I don't want them to see what I'm doing. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> see, that's 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 a good way of approaching it. You know, you know yes. keep, keep them blind until the very end. That's right. Yeah, yes. Okay. All right. Yes. But you see, you know, again, you know, the idea is you've got to start with those big simplified shapes. Okay. And one of them said it, I thought, pretty well, you know, you're starting from the big general things and you're working, you know, into those more specific, smaller shapes. And so, you know, I, I keep saying that to all of you, you know, start with the big stuff, work your way down to the little stuff, right? Um, and, you know, if you're just beginning to draw or paint or anything else, a lot of that is a little confusing because, you know, you don't know what the big stuff is, you know, or what the little stuff. Um, but, you know, just as a general rule of thumb is get the big shapes and proportions in first, right? And once you get those big shapes and proportions, then you got a good idea of where to put that nose or where to put those eyes, right? And Naomi, Yes. <laughs> How many times did you see them find the center line of the face? All the time. Yeah, that's really important, okay? You know, because what it does is it helps tell you, you know, it's dividing that front plane of the face up. And, you know, if, it's, if they're looking directly at you like I'm looking right now, then that center line is, of the face is pretty much so in the middle. That's why they call it the center line, right? But then what happens when you do this? See? Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, it's not in the middle. See? There's actually more distance here 
than there is there, right? Yes. Okay. And again, you know, it, it comes down to thinking about that three-dimensional shape and how it's moving in space, right? So keep it in mind. Right? All right. So that's what I had for you today. Um, anybody got any thoughts on that? Come Good on. To practice Good. all this stuff. What is that, Bob? Say it's all good to practice all this stuff. I, I found a, a book in my mother-in-law's collection of art stuff because she was a pretty good decent artist. Uh -huh. And it's the Loomis, it's the Loomis method. I mean, and it's I think dates back into the 40s is when she probably got this this mm -hmm. book. And it's one of the big ones, you know, that's about 17 inches by 12 inches wide. I don't know if you've seen those or not. You know, got a they had a bunch of drawing books like that in, yeah. in years past. Right. Yeah, how to paint, how to draw horses. And, right. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I'm trying to remember that guy's name because it was a whole, like... Walter huge. somebody. Yeah, Walter, yeah. I'll, 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 I'll dig one out and I'll, I'll, I'll remember it this afternoon. <laughs> okay. All right, yeah. No, I, I had dozens of those books as a kid, you know, and, and they're really helpful because, again, they make it really simple. And that's the idea. It's how do you make this simple you know, without getting into all the nuances of anatomy and all that other stuff you know which you know to do a good drawing you know it helps you know to understand that but it's not required you know yeah none of us need to take a human anatomy course at this point in our life right you know because we're not going to be medical students. So, you know, we just need to understand those basic shapes and forms. All right. Billy, what do you got to say? You, you watched the whole video. Well, it certainly gives a new perspective. Okay. One that I have not been using, which I think <laughs> I can see some flaws. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I know you like to paint. And, you know, you're not that big of a fan of drawing as much. Um, but you know, again, you know, if, if you practice this, you know, what it does, whether you're, whether you're using paint or whether you're using a pencil, see, it begins to get your brain attuned to yeah. thinking about three dimensional forms is what, and that's what you're painting, you know? Uh, so, so keep, you know, keep a pencil in your hand, keep drawing, right? And again, you know, it's not about drawing the details. It's about keeping things in simple blocks and shapes and forms. If, if, you, if you get good at that, your art will improve in huge ways, right? I can see that, yes. Okay? Because that's what most, you know, that's what most beginning artists struggle with is, you know, how, when, when I'm painting or when I'm drawing, you know, everything looks flat. Why does it look flat? Well, the reason being is right in here, okay? And that is, it, you know, just like when you were a child and any of us, when we first started drawing, you know, we did a lot of stick figures and everything looked really flat, right? But as we got older, we began to get a little more nuanced, you know, in our observations. And, okay, so, you know, we began to realize that it was a three-dimensional world and it began to get a little bit better, right? Well, now we're all grown up, okay? And our brains are sophisticated enough to really understand that we really do live in a three-dimensional world. And so now we've got to find a way of expressing that and understanding those underlying structures, those forms, those basic shapes, you know, a cube, a sphere, a cone, right? Will make all the difference in the world, you know, in both your drawings and your paintings, because all of a sudden you won't think about it like it's a flat two dimensional 
thing like a photograph, you'll think about it as a three-dimensional form. And, and that, that's where things change, you know, for artists. And for those of you, is a lady here? Because we were talking about this, I don't see her. Uh, we were talking about it the other day. And, you know, she likes to do a lot of abstract art, right? So it's non-representational. But even within an abstract painting, you know, understanding, you know, how to create, you know, depth and shapes and forms within your abstract painting, again, take them to a different level, right? So. Now, question. Yes. If I'm gonna paint a face on a Canva with uh, oil, can I use this schedule first on the Canva? Yes. Oh, okay. Yes, you can. You know? Yeah, it, again, it doesn't matter whether you're drawing and, or painting, right? If you understand, you know, how to begin to set up, you know, the form of a head, um, and then you can determine where the light is from and begin to place those rough blocks of value, you're way ahead, you know, because then you've got a three-dimensional form. And then you can begin to try to whittle away at it and make it look like a particular person, you know, and, and make observations about, you know, do all of their proportions feel, you know, really kind of fit into that ideal of kind of what we call a standard human head? Or what's different about them? You know, do they have different lengths and proportions in their face? You know, are they longer in the center, shorter toward the chin and the forehead? Or is it a perfect one third? And, and so then you can make those adjustments before you get into doing any details, you know, before you start painting the eyelashes or the, the nostrils or things like that, you know, you get those proportions correct and the forms correct. And, and particularly in painting, but, you know, also true in drawing. When you start getting those, those proportions of those forms correct, it's already gonna start looking like them before you ever put the first feature on their face. You know, you're gonna to begin to recognize their head if you get that right, right? If you don't get that right, then you're not ready to start putting those features on there, okay? So don't be in a big rush, you know, get those proportions right and then build on top of it, okay? Anybody else got any questions about that? Eloise, you're awful quiet. Of course, you're muted. You need to unmute yourself. I'm overcome with enthusiasm. Overcome with it. Wow. Okay. Are you looking? Forward, are you looking forward to margaritas this afternoon? <laughs> That's the thought. Yeah. Yeah. Did everybody get my? Did everybody get my email this morning that I sent out? Yeah, I did. Yes, I have my coffee here. I'm ready. All right. I, was, I wanted to ask Eloise. Uh, she, you showed those portraits she did last week, right? right. That was Eloise, do you think this yes. is going to help you improve your portraits that you do of people? Because you do so many. You try I hope so. Method? You'll try I this I try to. I try. I uh, get something out of every class, so I will be incorporating some of the information in my art if I can. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, practice this a little bit, you know, and I know, you know, it's, it's not always easy to get, you know, somebody to hold still, you know, for you to, to practice drawing from life. Okay. And again, you know, I would, I would always encourage you to try to draw from life rather than photos, but if you don't have any other choice than photos, do photos. Okay, drawing is drawing, it's okay. Uh, in fact, 
you know, if you can't find a model, go stand in front of a mirror, draw yourself. Okay. And, uh, you know, but, but if you can, you know, if you can find somebody sitting still in a chair, um, actually I saw something on Facebook today that was pretty cute. It, it, it was talking about, you know, um, falling asleep and, uh, all you have to do to fall asleep is have an old person in a chair. You know, that's basically the joke, you know, I, I can relate to that. You know, I can get in front of a TV set and sit down and within 20 minutes I'm asleep. So if Maria wanted to draw me, you know, <laughs> you know, I'm not moving after that. <laughs> so, you know, that's, there's, there's these prime opportunities in life, you know, to, you know, to practice your life drawing. You just have to be quiet, you know, and don't disturb them. Um, Did you finish your life drawing? Uh, my life drawing? Uh, was the what? Yourself, your self-portrait. My self-portrait. The, the last self-portrait you were working on. Um, okay, were you going to send it to the Portrait Society? Did you? Oh, 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 yeah, no, I didn't. I No, no, I got distracted. You know, it's still in the works. Okay, I was looking for you. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah, quite yeah. Yeah, I think the deadline came and passed on that one. Yeah, they've already voted. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, that's that's a problem. You know, you, you get too many projects going on and in certain things, you know. Well, you know your students know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but the thing is, I'll be ready for next year. All right. <laughs> so, you know, that's, that's, that's the thing. So anyway, um, I don't have a lot of new drawings. I have a lot of stuff from Naomi, uh, a lot of handbags and stuff like that, which we'll talk about on Monday. But yeah, if you guys got any drawings or sketches or anything, Bob sent me one. Uh, that's really about the only one I got. Send in some stuff. Otherwise, I'm going to torture you this afternoon with drinking margaritas and looking at some of my drawings, okay? That'll work. So that was a threat, okay? So send me some stuff. You got in a half dozen. Well, I didn't get this morning's did you, what did you send this morning? I didn't get anything. Uh, this morning I sent the leaks, links to today's classes. And uh, I also sent the uh, palette Thank from the opinion. Ala Prima yeah. and also the uh, how to mix skin tones. Did right. you send that again to me, the palette and the skin tone? I, I can. The same <laughs> yeah, I can. Check. Check your email. It I looked be at it this morning. I didn't see it at what, all. What time did you look at it? Early. Okay. Well, look at it now because it was probably like nine o'clock when I sent it. Okay. I'll look again. Yeah. Look I again. Sent three and, on Wednesday. Pardon? I sent three to you on Wednesday. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you did. Yeah. A couple. Oh, uh, I, I understand. You're, you're blocking me. No. I'm not. You, know. you blocked me too. Oh, I did. No, I didn't. No, no, I've got some oh, you for you. I'm just saying today. Okay. So, so anybody else? Um, I have some ideas. When I show the pocketbooks, I yeah. have some ideas for the ladies how to do it. Okay. And well, we can, again, I'm going to talk about all the purses. Yeah. On Monday? Yeah. Okay. And uh, by the way, you know, I, I see that you're trying to keep Stanley busy. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. He's doing a lot of scanning and sending emails for you. Oh, he's doing a lot more. <laughs> yeah, I, I have. I, yeah, I got about 15 or 20 emails from him. You know. 15 or 20? <laughs> yeah. It, 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 yeah. Some, of, some of them are duplicates, you know. Oh, but I can always count, you know, on, on Stanley filling up my, my uh, inbox. So anyhow, <laughs> all right. So we'll be back here at uh, two o'clock and, uh, you know, bring, you know, bring your own uh, mixed drink and uh, whatever that is. And, uh, and we'll have a, a happy Friday celebration. Okay. All right. Bye. Bye. Thank you. So Bye. I'll see you guys Thank at you. two o'clock.
Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.